Okay, here we are. I did not have granola this time in between, by the way. Uh, the last one was peanut butter granola. The next time might be, I have this chocolate chip granola bar. I'm going to eat that. All right, so we are on page 381 of the book. And we're going to look at number one. It says expected value. Find the expected value of each random variable. So what they're giving us is they're giving us the probability model, and it looks like this. Here's x. Here's the probability of x, and the values that they're giving us for x are this. So you can have 10, you can have 20, you could have 30, and the probability of 10 is 0.3, probability of 20 is 0.5, and the probability of 30 is 0.2. So what does this really represent? Well, I mean, think about this. What this could represent would be like a spinner game. Here's your spinner board that you have right here, and you get how many points it lands on. And 50% of this board is dominated by a score of 20. Of the other half, three-fifths are a 10. So as I draw poorly, three-fifths would be 10, and the other two-fifths would be thir thir there we go, 30. So it would look like that. You spin it, and this is the probability of getting your score. So, the mean, expected value, expected value, the mean uh, of x is equal to the summation of x sub i p sub i. So what we want to see is we want to see you taking each value and multiplying by its probability and then adding them together. And, and, and that's great, and that's a lot of work because what I have to do is I have to do something like this. I have to say, oh, 10 times 0.3 plus 20 times 0.5 plus 30 times 0.2, okay? So you're going to do all that work. And then you get the values and then you would sum them up, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to actually make life a little bit easier and more organized by taking this model and we're going to extend one row down. And we're going to name this row x sub i, p sub i. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this exactly right here. And it'll stay nice and organized for us and make life a little easy. All right? So each value of x times its associated probability, x sub i times p sub i, 10 times 0.3 is going to be 3. 20 times 0.5 is going to be 10. And 30 times 0.2 is 6. So what I have here is I have this statement right here saying, oh, look, here's each x sub i, p sub i. I'm taking care of this, and I'm getting the values in place as well. My personal opinion, and, and I, I certainly think that it would make absolutely sense, is they want to see this on the AP test. And then what they want to see is they want to see this next statement here. They want to say the summation of 3 plus 10 plus 6 is equal to 19. And they also want to see you write this. Okay. So here's what I think that we should do. What I, what I tell my students and what I'm telling you, because, well, you know what? Chances are you are my students. After we have this information here, which is the x sub i, p sub i, we need to say the summation of x sub i, p sub i is equal to. And then you can just add these values together and get 19. Because this is stating, yes, I understand what the expected value is because they're asking you for the expected value. Fine. This is saying you understand what it is. That's the formula for it. You've already got the x sub i times the p sub i. It's common sense from that table right there, and you're getting the answer. So this is what you're going to write. Okay. There's the mean, the expected value. What about the standard deviation? Standard deviation. What I would have to do, what AP Stats wants to see is this, and I hate this, but this is what it, now remember that's 19. What AP Stats wants to see is this, the variance is equal to each value, 10 minus the mean, 19 squared times the probability, 0.3 plus the next value, 20 minus 19 squared times its probability, 0.5 plus Next value, 30 minus the mean, 19 squared, times its probability, 0.2. And then you're going to have to sum them, and that's the variance, and then you have to take the square root and get the standard deviation. If you want full points on the test, this is what you have to do. For me, I don't want to see that. That's more work than I want to do, and that's, that's sucking up more time than I think that we really need to put into this. So what do I want you to do? Use the calculator. 
Just use the calculator, and when you're done with the calculator, you're going to say this. Standard deviation, or, or line, standard deviation of x is equal to, and then we'll get our value. All right, so how do we use the calculator to do this? What we're going to do, if I had a, a list of data and I wanted to find the mean and the standard deviation, I would put the mean, I would, sorry, I would put the data in list one, and then I would do one variable stat. But what I actually have here is I have two lists of information. I've got x and I've got the probability of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these values, I'm going to put the x values in list 1. And that would be 10 and 20 and 30. In list 2, because I have a second list of information. Let's see if this is going to enter because this is working slow. In list 2, I'm going to put the associated probabilities. 10 is 0.3. 20 is 0.5, and 30 is 0.2. And I apologize for the fact that this is kind of blurry. Let's see if I can maybe tighten that up a little bit with some focus here. And I got my projector died, and I had to get a projector. That's why everything seems off here a little bit. So we've got a different projector. Okay, so again, to find the mean standard deviation, I'm going to do one variable stat. So I go to our favorite button in the whole world, which is stat. I go over to calculate one variable stat, lovely, one variable stat, and then what I see here, let's get rid of all that crap up there. Let's do it again. Stat, calculate, one variable stat, but I've got two sets of data. So I have to tell it, L1, and then where the second list is, L2. I think the default, no, the default is just L1, so you have to do this. L1 comma L2, and then I'm gonna hit enter. Okay, here's my mean. 19, we found that. Here's my standard deviation 7. Now notice this is population standard deviation symbol. And then look at this. Sample standard deviation, S sub X. It's blank. This is a good sign because here's what happens. When I put the decimal values, and by decimals I mean values less than 1. When I put the decimal values into L2, the calculator is programmed to recognize this and say, oh, this is a probability distribution. <clears throat> And if you have a probability distribution, that means that you have the population. And if you have the population, there is no sample standard deviation. So this is a good clue. If this is blank right here, then you've got a good idea. You're doing something right. If you've got a value in here for the sample standard deviation, then you can sit there and say, oh, I've got something wrong. Because if I would do this backwards, if I would do stat calculate one variable stat for L2 comma L1, and now I've got the probabilities first and, and the values second. Notice that I get a population standard deviation and I get a sample standard deviation. Now my mean's completely off too, but this is telling me because I've got the sample standard deviation, it's wrong, okay? So, back to it, stat, calculate, one variable stats for L1 comma L2, enter, and no sample standard deviation and the mean is 19. If you just put down for me, if you just put down that the mean is equal to 19 and the standard deviation is, is 7, I'm going to give you points for the standard deviation, but I'm taking off a whole bunch of points for the mean because, and maybe this is unfair, I don't know. You know what? I don't care. I want to see x sub i, p sub i. I want to see these values. I want to see the phrase, the summation of x sub i, p sub i equals, and then I want to see it. So I want to see these values for x sub i, p sub i. I want to see the phrase x sub i, p, the summation of x sub i, p sub i equals, and then the value. I want to see it. You don't get it, you're not getting those points, okay? So standard deviation might be worth one. This might be worth three. Point for the, for the actual value, point for the x sub i, p sub i summation symbol, and a point for the values for x sub i, p sub i. I want to see all of it. And if you don't like it, ha-ha! All right, coming back after the break.